problem that I see clients coming away with is that they haven't fully understood how important the nutritional portion of management is and they will tend to stray quite a bit from the recommendations. So as a primary care veterinarian, even if you recommend the best example is a hydrolyzed protein diet, they will go away with that hydrolyzed protein and then they will go and feed chicken breast treats and then some you know, beef treats and then some kibbles and bits because it looked good and then the table scrap and then they will come back and complain that the special diet's not working. It's because they see the special diet as equivalent to a pill and it's not. They don't understand that the diet is meant to be utilized by itself without all the additives because when they start adding things in they just destroy the purpose of the diet and furthermore they will complain about the cost of the diet and not understand that they're undoing all the benefit by adding in all the other junk. So as a primary care doctor seeing these patients, I think um, we need to make sure that we drill into people's minds that this diet is the diet that you're feeding and you're not supposed to mix it up with everything else. Um, beyond that, whenever you are making a diagnosis, it's easy as a practitioner to think of all the pills that you need to prescribe and the medications, and etc. But each and every patient that you're diagnosing, you should be asking, is the pet on the best diet for this condition? And I don't care if it's a cruciate ligament injury in a dog, if they're eating all Roy or what have you, um, and they're obese, maybe they should get onto a diet that lets them lose a little bit of weight. Um, if you're seeing an ear problem, could this animal have a food allergy? And if so, there goes that discussion about if you're going to change the diet, you have to stick to it, including the treats, including the things you use to pill the animal. So I can think of, as an internist, because this is always forefront in my mind, I can probably think of a need for a specialized diet or a better diet in almost every patient that walks through the door uh, unless they've already had that addressed with their veterinarian.